it's finally time for some more trophy hunting here in the Hunter Classic after a bit of an extended break. And I'm not going to lie, I am just super excited to use a compound bow. We finally got our 1,000 kills with the cable back, so we can go back to using compounds, crossbows, or whatever for our big game now that we just have the crossbow pistols left. But we're setting out on Timbercle Trails, continuing our quest for a 400 knot tip mule deer, and we'll see if we can add that or anything else to the trophy lodge. And already, we've got a herd of mule deer bucks coming in. This one down here in front of us is probably going to have to be the one we take, but from what I can tell, it's probably the best one. But this is why I'm excited to use a compound bow again. No thinking about it. No super, like, detailed trying to get the shot lined up just right. We can just get it on the vitals and release. And it's just going to be nice. Not only that, but to be able to take some longer shots. Like, double lung liver stomach. That's not a thing the cable back does, <laughs> like, ever. And it's going to be, I think, freeing, really, to just have that option again. You know, another kind of minor goal would be to get a 400 Rocky for the Lodge. That would mostly be just to make the Lodge look better, not necessarily because we don't have one. But that sort of ends up being the goal for everything. We're after a 400 non-tip Mule Deer, a 400 Rosie, a 400 Rocky, and they're all such different levels of attainability. I also was just thinking, having the compound again, we may end up using our guns a little bit less. And of course, that's a part of this series too. Putting the guns that we use on the wall. And by the way, speaking of those, we have the 8x57 for our rifle today. And back to the 10 mil for our pistol. We've been through all the pistol, or pistol slots at least, that we can use. So, we're moving back through them, and I like this for this map. It's good for wolves and stuff like that. It just sort of suits what I think you kind of need here. Now, if you've been following this series for a while, or even just since we started to incorporate Timberwolf Trails and Mule Deer into it, you'll know that every time that we go after Mule Deer, for whatever reason, we just end up focusing on something else the entire hunt instead. I believe two times in a row, we ended up with exactly three mule deer buck kills, which just isn't enough emphasis on like the one species we're actually here for. For that, I'm guessing we got single lung, I don't imagine how we wouldn't have, but there's actually another buck crossing the river here. He is decent size, maybe like 170 or so. He's got actually two kickers on his right side they are going to cost him. And I was looking at that blood too, I think we ended up with intestines, so at least we're not tracking that guy. And we've got a doe still here behind us. And actually, for the heck of it, why not just go ahead and take that with the 10 mil? We have to track the buck anyway. We're probably going to spook some other stuff. I think that buck should expire if we crouch track him, so we should be good just to kind of get going. As for this guy, at least a decent buck, ended up with spine, liver, and stomach trim. We got to put those shots a little further forward, I guess. But 173 score despite the kickers. And we'll go ahead and get on this track. It could be liver. Like, I didn't feel like we were that far back, but I suppose we will soon find out. I don't know, though. If this guy hadn't just kept on going, we may have ended up spooking him. He went for a really long ways. It was only a minute one time, I guess. There's a lot of walking, though. It was just liver and stomach. But, I mean, we tracked him almost 500 meters. I don't know how he made it that far in a minute and a half. Either way, at least we got him down, and it took us the direction we were going to go, so didn't really hurt anything in the end. But at least we're moving in the right direction here. Got a 310 to 360 Rocky, and I would guess he's probably in the area of 340. So we'll go ahead and take him down, getting almost up to the Y in the river, and hopefully up there we'll have a number of mule deer and elk. But as for this guy... Double lung liver again, 329 score. Not too bad considering he had some short tines, and hopefully we can keep on improving as we go. We might have ourselves a decent little spot here. We've got a smallish mule deer buck coming in here. There was another one that grunted maybe somewhere over in the area of that doe. And the only reason we're here to begin with to get these grunts is we were on the track of a max weight mule deer, which I actually think most likely spooked. We got really close, like, Solid Circle came up on the Hunter Mate, and I just can't find the next track, so hopefully we get these bucks and maybe bonus doe down, and we can get back on those and figure that out. Or, if somehow he didn't spook, maybe he comes in too. There's just mule deer everywhere right now, which, on the bright side, as far as potentially spooking that max weight buck goes, 
it's got to be less likely that he's spooked just because there's a bunch of calm deer around. If he ran past any of these, they'd be gone. But that said, sitting here calling and no sign of him yet. I mean, we're literally surrounded, though. They're on all sides right now. And, of course, a bunch of does are coming in. But if we can just continue to drop them, we should be able to get away with it. Now, that spooked. And that was that doe that was coming down the road. It may spook the original buck. I honestly never got to see it or hear it again. So if that's the case, so be it. We'll give it like two more minutes. If he doesn't show up, we'll get back on the track. I'm going to say we should just go ahead and get out of here. There's does literally everywhere. I don't even know how there can be that many in one spot. Maybe we need to stand here, but we're just going to spook these things. If we take a shot now, it's going to spook other ones anyway. So not a big deal. We can just run over here, get our, I think, second doe. Got our buck laying down here in the brush, and then the third doe is over there. But the good news is, even though the max weight one never came in, if he did spook, at least it kills some time. And if he's out there nervous, he's got less time until he calls back down and potentially calls and reveals his location. But the good news is, this time, we are way past three total mule deer. We're killing plenty of them. Hopefully this heavy track will yield a good one. We still haven't gotten a 200 plus in this series. I'd love, obviously the 400 non-tip is the goal, but even just a 200 typical for the wall for now would be great. And I'd like to think on a map like Timbergold, we should be able to do it. Well, that's not our buck, but that is an albino mule deer doe, which quite possibly the most ironic thing about that is season two, I think, of Let's Go Trophy Hunting. We also killed an albino mule deer doe on Timbergold. I'd like her to maybe step out of there. I think we can get that shot through there. Because we're actually kind of closed in on our buck. So I want to make sure we get this. I don't know if she just walked into something. I've not called. So why she's walking this way, I have no idea. But we really lucked into it. And actually, we hit her just a bit back. I hope that doesn't spook the buck. Because frankly, I'd have never found him and never came over here. If I didn't see him fleeing across the river when just running back and forth looking for his tracks. And he's at least where we are on the trail right now, still fleeing. So I think he'll be far enough ahead of us. So we'll just mark that blood and come back to that in a bit. I really don't want to let him get too far ahead again. They're tough to track down in this area, but we're close now. And I mean, either way, regardless of what he is, and he looked decent when I saw him, and albino is probably cooler. Well, finally, we get eyes on this buck. He's definitely not a 200. He's probably going to be 190s. But we're going to fast travel anyway. We're not going to worry about having to track that guy. So at least we've now fired all the weapons. We can go back and track that albino. But my goodness, was that ever terrible? 192 score. I don't know how long we tracked that thing. It was right about an hour. And it was just always back and forth. We'd run into fleeing tracks and then going back the other way, the next track. It was really challenging. But unfortunately, not quite what we're after. But you know what? All in all... That didn't work out too bad. She ended up dropping at least close enough to the sunlight that I think we can get a decent photo. And actually, it was an intestine shot again. I'm finding that I think I'm so used to like the open face, no sights on the bows. It's a little challenging to get used to having something blocking the sight line, but intestine stomach, obviously the albino. We are going to tax that. Probably a full body mount. I don't know what we have there though. And definitely we'll get a trophy shot of that. And I mean, for the scenario, that didn't turn out too bad. But I mentioned that we're going to go ahead and fast travel. We spent just about half of this entire hunt so far literally tracking that one buck. And I figure at this point, we might as well fast travel somewhere and work our way back to a lodge. And you know what? I think we're going to go from here. It's such a good spot late in hunts for Mule Deer to kind of congregate. It may work, it may not. But... I want to give ourselves a chance, at least, of getting another Mule Deer buck. So, I don't know what's going on with the grass there. We'll sit in the stand for five minutes, call a little bit. If nothing shows up, we'll work our way to the Trophy Lodge. Well, at least we've got another buck here. And actually, I think he'd end up being maybe our third best. We'll just take him with the 10 mil and make a better shot the second time. Probably a 150s buck or something like that. Oh, both shots were apparently not that good, but... Enough to bring him down 145 score, and we're still a decent distance from the lodge, but 
I definitely don't want to get any long tracks again, so either 10 mil or 8x57 probably from here on out, just hopefully the shots land in the vitals. And as it turns out, we don't need to worry about any vital or non-vital shots anymore. We're back at the lodge, so I want to get in here and figure out how we're going to do the albino doe, because I don't remember, we must have something on that full body platform and that might mess with things. Well, that was simple. We did not have anything there, and I'm sure most of you guys knew that just because we were in the lodge to begin with, but that's pretty cool. I mean, looking at this lodge, all the elk back there need improved. I think there's like a three, yeah, 384 from Settlers, but we've really gotten somewhere, and there's plenty of stuff to still get better with, but it's just neat to see the variety. I really love where this series has gone, and like I said, just exciting to use a compound again. I gotta get used to it, because we really weren't as efficient as I was hoping to be, but that will come in due time. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.